Et maintenant, je vais présenter Chen Kiufan. Il signe également ses œuvres sous le nom de plume de Stanley Chan. C'est un auteur chinois de science-fiction, ou plus précisément de romans d'anticipation. Ses livres ont été primés à de nombreuses reprises. Il est également traducteur, producteur artistique et conservateur. Il est vice-président du comité de science-fiction de l'Association des écrivains chinois, président honoraire de l'Association des écrivains de science-fiction chinois, leader culturel du Forum économique mondial en 2018 et 2019, jeune leader de l'Asia 21 Society en 2022 et il siège au conseil consultatif de science-fiction de la fondation XPRIZE. Parmi ses œuvres, citons le roman « Waste Tide » paru en anglais chez Tor Book en 2019 et qui paraîtra en français en octobre prochain chez Rivage sous le titre « L'île de Silicium ». C'est un thriller écologique sur la question des déchets électroniques dans la Chine du futur. Ainsi qu'un autre ouvrage, AI 2042, 10 scénarios pour notre futur, AI pour Artificial Intelligence, coécrit avec Kai Fu Li, ingénieur en informatique qui a passé plus de trois décennies à la pointe de la recherche dans le domaine de l'intelligence artificielle, tant aux états unis chez Microsoft, Apple, Google, qu'en Chine. Ce livre paraîtra également dans sa traduction française en octobre prochain aux éditions Les Arènes. Il a été par ailleurs sélectionné aux états unis comme meilleur livre de l'année par le New York Times, le Washington Post et le Wall Street Journal. Les deux auteurs nous racontent dix histoires de science-fiction situées dans des contextes culturels différents auxquels ils mêlent analyses technologiques sur le développement de l'intelligence artificielle et défis futurs de nos sociétés. Is talking about the pandemic traumatized experience. So, because I live in Shanghai, so everyone had the same experience. We want to talk about the future and how we can live with the virus, with the pandemic, with technology. So, I'll start it from a quotation uh, from Confucius The flowers of the cherry tree, how the petals weave and turn. How would it be, I do not long for you, and your home is so far distant? The master commented, he couldn't really have longed for her, could he? If he had, how could any distance have been too great? So the nightmare had returned. Chen Nan was a ghost levitating mid-air, watching her five-year-old self from the outside. The little girl's body was rigid as people dressed in astronaut-like suits entered the room, placed the bodies of her grandparents, her guardians, her only family, onto stretchers and covered them with white clothes. In the dream, everything was pale and bleak, There were no wailing ambulance sirens, pungent smell of disinfectants, no color at all. The little girl stood by the door, her face expressionless. Yet Chen Nan knew that the calmness she displayed was actually fear. Once, when Chen Nan described her nightmares, her therapist suggested that she should try crying in her dream. The first step to let, letting your scars heal is to let out the emotions you've been suppressing. Chen Nan tried. She wanted the little girl to scream, to sob, to dash forward and stop the medical team from leaving so that she could speak to her grandparents again. Yet every time the little girl stood silently in the corner of the room, unable to move. On that day, 20 years earlier, an ominous new term had been ingrained in Chen Nan's vocab 
a vocabulary, COVID-19. For the longest time, whenever she heard this word, her heart rate would shoot up and her body would tremble uncontrollably. Her therapist told her she was experiencing trauma-induced panic attacks. And then there were nightmare, sinister, uninvited guests who never failed to bring more pain and confusion into her life when she was least expecting it. When it sensed an unusual breathing pattern and quickening heart rate during these nightmares, Chen Nan's smart pillow would woke her up with a gentle vibration as a soft music played. The window in her apartment adjusts its opacity with the arrival of daylight, revealing a forest of skyscrapers by the Huangpu River that glisten like pillars made of crystal in the golden dawn. She set up, taking deep inhales and exhales to calm down her racing heart. Chen Nan blinked and she emerged from the nightmare. A moment later, her mind was back in the year 2041, Pudong, Shanghai. As usual, the delivery bots resembling an extra-large version of R2-T2 dropped her package off at her doll's mail station. The disinfection box with its long and thin mechanical arms shaped like a spider crab stripped away the package wrapping and sprayed the package by the nozzle on its midsection. Before moving the package into her apartment, meanwhile, the air filtration system was humming at full force, its nano superfilter intercepting impurities from large sized dust particles to the coronavirus with its diameter of just 0.06 to 0.14 microns. Chen Nan walked from the bedroom into her bathroom, carelessly reaching for her toothbrush. The mirror in her bathroom displayed indoor air quality alongside live pandemic cases update of various major cities around the globe. The lines of number and words unfolding, rolling and refolding in the correspondence to the trajectory of her gaze, so that the display wouldn't affect her wash-up routine. Since its first arrival in the human population in 2019, the coronavirus has evolved into a seasonal outbreak. In response, humans has gradually evolved their lifestyle, tailoring routines and customs to be COVID era. The first and palm salute, first popularized in China, in which a person greets another by pressing their left palm to the right fist and nodding, had replaced handshaking as a dominant global greeting. Back in the day when Chen Nan would still manage to get herself out of her apartment, she made sure to check the health tracker status of every place she went, down to the exact street and living compound. A green check means safe, a red cross indicated a positive case, and a yellow circle signaled caution, a symptomatic virus carrier who could be present. Powered by ambiguous smart stream sensors, cloud-based big data pools, an AI algorithm trained on the dynamic infectious disease model. The healthy tracker covered the entire country to protect individuals' privacy. The government adopted federal learning coupled with strict legal measures to eliminate the misappropriation of personal 
information. As a gaze landed on the corner of the mirror, Chen Nan's hand holding the toothbrush held it mid-air. Usually by this time, Garcia's text message laden with heart emojis and video call invites would have already taken over the display interface. Garcia, her Brazilian boyfriend, was in the GMT3 time zone, one, 11 hours behind Shanghai time. Today, however, the display interface was empty, reflecting only Chen Nan's bare face. Her eyebrow twitched into a frown of unease. So I'll read a little bit of the Chinese, so it's totally the same, so then you can understand. The title is Wu Jie Chu Zhi Lian. The quotation from Confucius, Tang Di Zhi Hua, Pian Qi Fa Er, Qi Bu Er Si, Shi Shi Yuan Er. Zi Yue, Wei Zhi Si Ye, Fu He Yuan Zhi Yong. Lun Yu Zi Han. Chen Nan 又做了那个噩梦，他被抛回二十年前的那个夜晚，像一个漂浮的幽灵，以第三者视角看着五岁的自己。那个小女孩一动不动，看着宇航员般全身防护的白衣人走进房间，把爷爷和奶奶抬上